Happy to have you to do smart person. My name's Dylan. I'm a physicist from the land down under. Grab a coffee, grab a chair, grab a Vegemite sandwich, look, grab whatever you want. Let's talk some natural philosophy. So today we're going to be watching and reacting to some Superman, the man himself. So we'll watch some scenes. I'll break down some of the physics of it, if there is any. And you guys can probably tell there is some new scenery today. We are filming in a new location and I'll probably be filming in the same location for maybe the next couple of videos. I'm in the process of uh, getting back to Australia. I'm currently in New Zealand. If you didn't know, you won't find any serious physics around here. Just some seriously fun facts. So if that's what you're into, please apply some time derivative of momentum onto that subscribe button. The 80s greens, didn't he? Go, go. Ah. All right, so let's talk about Superman's superhuman strength. Um, so I think I remember reading somewhere that his strength is meant to be a result of the fact that Krypton, his home planet, has a lot uh, more intense gravity. And I think you, we can safely assume superhuman, I mean, Superman's about a thousand times as strong as any other human. So let's do the calculation if Superman is a thousand times stronger. So we're trying to work out the mass and density of Krypton, that is, to see if the planet is somewhat realistic. So as I said, if Superman is about a thousand times stronger than the average human, that would mean he could probably lift about a hundred thousand kilograms. Not a bad lift, that's all right. So uh, to work out the force required to lift an object on any given planet, would be equal to the mass of that object times the gravitational force on that planet. So that would mean that Krypton would need to be about a thousand times larger than Earth, which means that uh, if you approximate gravity on Earth, it's about 10 meters per second squared. So that means that the gravity on Krypton would be about 10,000 meters per second squared. So if you do that calculation, Krypton's mass turns out to be about three times the mass of our sun. Now that's not exactly allowable by the laws of physics because if a planet had that much mass in a smaller region than the size of the sun, well, obviously you're going to get a star. It has so much density that the matter would collapse in on itself and nuclear fusion reactions would be occurring. And in fact, if it had that much density and it was you know, a lot smaller than a star, well, you'd get something a lot more violent than just a normal star. Anyway, where does this strength come from? Is it possible for something to be that strong? Well, in the comics and the movies, he, he had so much strength, he could stop a plane, you know, the nose cone of a plane with his hand. Um, so that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because that's like trying to, uh, you know, stop someone falling over, you know, with a knife blade up. Um, it's not going to end well, right? So it's just not really possible. So instead of strength, maybe what Superman is doing is he's actually using this hypothetical state of matter called negative mass. Maybe he's able to turn things into negative mass. So let me explain. All the properties of particles would be the same for this hypothetical state of matter. And if you were to push on negative mass, it would actually go flying. So maybe Superman has the ability to turn parts of his body into negative mass or the things he's touching. So say when Superman tries to catch a plane, well, the plane would be pushing on this area of negative mass if it was set in his hand. And that would actually cause the plane to resist and to slow down and possibly even, you know, not break into a million pieces. This would also explain why Superman's strength increases and decreases depending on who he's fighting because this negative mass stuff would only be able to resist 
it, with the same amount of force that's being applied to it. So, yeah, obviously that's not what they went with Superman, but that is one way you could potentially have Superman strength. So there may be a few problems with this hypothetical strength, uh, but I'll explain those after we discuss another of Superman's abilities. So let's watch another clip. Why am I so different from them? The cells have drunk in its radiation, strengthening your muscles, your skin, senses. Earth's gravity is weaker, yet its atmosphere is more nourishing. I've grown stronger here than I ever could have imagined. The only way to know how strong is to keep testing your limits. Now let's pause it there and talk about Superman's ability to fly. Is there anything in physics that could explain this ability? Is there any way anything like this is possible? And again, this negative mass stuff, this hypothetical state of matter, could actually explain it as well. Though not really in any kind of obvious way. So negative mass and positive mass are meant to fall towards each other, right? So he feels gravity the same way as everyone else does, but he would also be able to feel uh, air molecules all around his body. So if he was able to turn these air molecules to negative mass, like we talked about with the strength, well then this would actually push him upwards. Uh, in, an, in the opposite way, if he was able to create uh, like an outer shell of negative mass around his body, he's meant to have like an aura, right? So this would also create a similar thing where the force of the air molecules pushing against his body would actually repel it up. So like with the strength, if he was able to turn, you know, these air molecules around him to negative mass, that would actually push him upwards. Uh, and then in an opposite way, if he was able to create, you know, an outer shell of negative mass around his body, uh, the air molecules would be pushing against his body and this would repel him forward. So maybe Superman's using air pressure and negative mass to fly. Who knows? However, this really shouldn't help Superman fly in space unless he's uh, tapping into the zero point energy, uh, which would work in a similar way. It's a really complicated thing to explain, but very simply, there's particles popping in and out of existence all the time. Um, but I think that's as much as I'll say about it until uh, I'll save it for another video because that's a massive tangent. If we humans could ever tap into this energy, the zero point energy, uh, it would provide like an unlimited source of energy. We really don't know how much energy is sort of available with this zero point energy though. Uh, the famous physicist Richard Feynman did a calculation once though, uh, and it suggested that the zero point radiation is so powerful that even a cup of it would boil all of the oceans on Earth. That a cup of the zero point radiation of the vacuum, that is. However, Einstein's uh, general relativity also suggests that the zero point radiation would gravitate all throughout the universe and spread out, which would make it rather weak. So this negative mass stuff that I've used to explain Superman's strength and uh, his ability to fly. Well, in reality, Unfortunately, it does violate several of the positive energy conditions, and he would more than likely be an uh, immovable object. He'd be too dense for Earth to sustain. So, yeah. But anyway, let's look at some other scenes and see what else we can find. Excuse me. That's a bad outfit. <laughs> okay, Breslau, move your feet. Easy, 
miss. I've got you. You... you've got me? Who's got you? <laughs> oh, I, I can't believe it. I just... I just cannot believe it. He got her. All right, so this scene... If Superman was really to catch a falling Lois Lane with his arms out like that, at such speed, uh, she probably would have been severed into three different pieces. So, yeah, not a very accurate scene. And I think if they had made it more accurate, it would have been a little bit more interesting. But anyway. All right, I think that'll do for part one. So there will be a part two. So make sure you subscribe to catch that. Uh, and if you guys have any good ideas for videos that I can react to, Make sure you drop a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time.